Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. My name is Justin. Some of you might already know me online as Daryl Off. Uh, I've been putting off starting this channel for quite a while, so I guess I'm supposed to give you guys a little bit of background about myself. I'm 32 years old from Atlantic Canada. I started gaming when I was about four or five. I started gaming on the NES or the NES, you know, the big fucking thing there. And so, uh, yeah, my dad used to actually walk down to the little corner store at the end of my road and he used to rent the Nintendo from there. And it used to come with Mario and Duck Hunt as it did back in the day. And eventually I remember I got it for Christmas and ever since then I've been playing games non-stop. I never stopped despite what anyone's told me better, I guess, or what they think is better. And I've been told to start a channel for a while that, you know, I know quite a bit. I'm really fascinated by video game history and I follow all the news. And so this channel is going to feature a lot of my Twitch highlights because I'm going to start streaming there. I'm streaming six days a week. And you can see the schedule up above on this video. And so if you want to hop over there and catch me live, you can. I'm also going to be doing some reviews of some new games that I play. I play a lot of early access games, a lot of beta games, and so I'll give you my impressions of those. I also plan on checking out some retro stuff because I still have a lot of my old consoles and a lot of games. And so that's something I'd really like to do at some point is go back and play some of the, those older games and sort of share my thoughts about them. I'd like to get a video up every day, but these are a lot of work, so I don't know if that's quite going to happen. But I'm going to do what I can. Hopefully I'll get things streamlined a little better so they can get a little easier to make and upload and everything. And so it's all in time, right? So just bear with me. <laughs> and so let's get started. First things first, we're going to talk about Nintendo. Nintendo has been talked about a lot lately. They've been going after a lot of ROM websites. They've went after Emu Paradise, Love ROMs, and they've been forcing them to shut down or remove their entire library of Nintendo games from their sites. They've been suing them for obscene amount of money. And so I found a story this weekend that was a little different stance on piracy that I thought was sort of interesting. And that comes from Compulsion Games, the developer behind We Happy Few. Uh, the game was in early access for a couple of years and it finally got released last week. It was released DRM free and it didn't take long for it to get released onto file sharing websites. One of, the, one of the developers from Compulsion Games went onto Reddit and they had this to say. Hi guys, developer here. I appreciate that many of you may or may not have the funds to buy the game and are excited about it anyway. Fair enough. However, if you do enjoy the game, I'd also appreciate it if you would buy it legally. This is something we've worked on for four and a half years, and buying the game is the way we actually can continue to make good games, even with the MS acquisition. Thanks, Sam from Compulsion. Obviously, MS there, standing for Microsoft. One Reddit user responded saying, Is there an alternative donation button that would allow people to contribute? I know that buying the full game is the best way to support, but for those that can only contribute 5, 10, 20, 30, etc., the developer responded saying, I'm afraid not, but I appreciate you asking. In any event, if people are not able to buy the game, then I really wouldn't want to ask that they do. That donation money might be better spent on looking after themselves. I think this is a great example of developers understanding that, you know, not everybody can afford the high price of games nowadays, or that some people might just want to try the game before they buy it. After all, it's not like the good old days where you could just go down to the corner store and rent a game and try it out before you spent your hard-earned money on it. I think it's important to note that We Happy Few also released without any DRM in the first place, which is somewhat uncommon nowadays. Many companies spend a lot of money putting DRM into their games to protect their release window, and those games all are often plagued with performance issues because of this. So Compulsion seem like a group of really great people, and I think they should be commended by taking this stance. It's one that not a lot of companies do, but I think it's one that more companies should. I hope that some companies that aren't so consumer friendly take a look at companies like Compulsion Games or like CD Projekt Red, and they take a note from them and they become a little bit more consumer friendly with their practices. All right, moving on. This weekend, I had the opportunity to stream the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 beta over on my Twitch channel. 
I haven't played a Call of Duty game since like Black Ops 2, so it definitely took me a couple of matches to get back into it. I've been playing a lot slower pace of game with uh, Escape from Tarkov. I actually had a lot more fun with the game than I thought that I would. I often give Call of Duty a bad name and compare it to horror movies saying that, you know, every bad, every horror franchise that turns bad is doomed to go to space like Call of Duty did. You know, the Leprechaun went to space and Jason went to space and everything else. And so I just kind of bumped it up there with that. And one thing that I did appreciate was there wasn't anything too over the top with this one. The game is still really fast like you expect from Call of Duty. Uh, the shooting mechanics feel really good. There wasn't a lot of time in between matches which is something I like. I hate spending a lot of time in the lobby. I like playing a game. The, uh, the FPS in the game was really solid all throughout. I could see it being a game that I could actually spend, you know, quite a bit more time playing. The only problem is it comes out this fall and there's a lot of competition this fall. And so I'm not sure if a lot of people are going to be buying this game or not. You know, you can let me know if you had a chance to play it and if you're going to be picking it up or if you didn't play it and you plan on picking it up anyways. But there is a lot of games coming out this fall and with the exclusion of a single player campaign, I think that, you know, maybe some people are going to start comparing it to Battlefront. Where Battlefront felt a little bit light on content, Call of Duty will as well. You know, they're adding in a Battle Royale mode, but Battlegrounds and Fortnite pretty much have the stranglehold on that genre. So, is that a moot point? We'll have to wait and see. Alright, so finally I want to talk about Scum. Scum is a game I've been following now for a while. If you don't know what Scum is, Scum is an online multiplayer open world survival game. It's by Gamespires and Crow Team. It's being published by Devolver Digital. Scum was due to hit early access this month and there was no date until this weekend when the Twitter account for Scum announced that it would hit early access on August 29th on Steam. If you want to know more about Scum, I really recommend heading to the Devolver Digital YouTube channel. They have a really well done, super funny playlist there. It's the Scum Developer Alpha Diary, and they take deep dives into the different systems that they have in place and the character progression and development systems that they have in place. It's definitely worth a watch. So that about does it for this video. Be sure to hit that like button below and subscribe. I stream live six days a week on Twitch. Uh, if you have a question or a comment about something you see here, come drop in or you can just say hi and check out what game I'm playing. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, that way you'll know when I upload a new video and when I'm going live. 